Welcome to the 19th episode of the Best Phone Plans Podcast. Today, show is being sponsored by Mint Mobile. Stay tuned for later in the show to hear more. With us, we have Aaron North on as our guest, and he is the Chief Marketing Office Officer for Mint and Ultra Mobile. Uh, so, Aaron, uh, Stetson was telling me behind the scenes you had a little bit of vacation time. How was it? <laughs> well, um, there were moments of rest, uh, pockets of rest, but there were also uh, plenty of things we've got cooking. So uh, it was good to get away, have some memories with the family, although getting away is, you know, driving uh, for us. Not ready to get on a plane just yet. Um, but we loved it. And uh, it was also exciting to get some work done while I was on that little PTO. I think it refreshes your your mindset and gives you like some neat angles to come in. And we have some some fun things we'll be doing this year because of it. That's well, amazing. That's, that's awesome. amazing. Yeah, we're we're excited to, to have you on the show and to be able to talk about Mint. And, you know, I think one of my big questions is how how did Mint get started? Right. So Mint launched 2016 direct to consumer brand. We had seen that mm -hmm. before, but you're coming out of nowhere with this bulk model, right? Where customers are signing up for three, six or 12 months at a time. Where did the genesis of this idea come from? I know you were working at Ultra, but yeah, how did how did Mint get started? Well, it's really interesting. I, I, I joined Ultra just about five years ago. Um, and as it turns out, Mint is also about to have its five-year-old birthday. So um, I was around for the start, but some of the work had been done before I got in there. So the, the brand name, uh, the pricing construct, things like that had been built. And when I got in, I got really excited. So I'm not a telco guy. I, I think Stetson, you know that from all of our conversations, but uh, I used to work in the world of affordable tacos before this and then uh, on the on the ad agency world. So I came in and I was, you know, super excited about direct to consumer. You had brands like Dollar Shave, you had Casper, Warby Parker, all these uh, phenomenal brands blowing up. And I'm like, why can't we do this in wireless? And that's really sort of my I think part of what makes me special to the company is that I have that outside in thinking and bringing just like a consumer centric mindset that isn't rooted in telecom business practices. And it's been, it's been very refreshing for the brand. And really what we did was we launched uh, shortly after I got there, I want to say it was maybe within like a few months and we just kept tuning and tuning and tuning and growing and making the offer better and listening to customers and just continually not only optimizing what we do from a marketing side, but enhancing the product. And this brand has just been an absolute rocket ship uh, ever since. Yeah, it's actually in the app. I don't know if you've loaded the yeah. app. You get a little <laughs> rocket animation or you used to have that on the website. I know I've seen that a bunch. Um, yep. Who who are your target customers when you were first launching this? And was it challenging to get them? It sounds like you just literally had a website and, you know, some ad spend to go by. Yeah, we were really look, expectations can get you in trouble when you're starting something new. I think everybody had high aspirations and excitement around the brand, but we didn't know what we were going to yield. So we did smart start small. And we had a lot of testing. So when we went out, of course, we were looking at the traditional audience you would think this would appeal to, cord cutters, millennials, things like that. But what I quickly realized was that as a direct-to-consumer brand, we were better off chasing performance than chasing a segment. So we made a quick pivot early in Mint's life that we were not going to focus on a target consumer. We were going to focus on performance of the media, performance of... Um, our 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 optimization channels our websites we were focused squarely on that and then we wanted to make sure whoever our customers were they had a fantastic experience and when we did that that really gave the brand um like a slingshot into the future because we were able to be very successful with who we had so we didn't have a lot of churn when we began but we were able to chase performance which meant the brand was able to grow and grow healthy as we were starting out. And it was really that type of approach where we didn't force segmentation that allowed the brand to breathe. And what we found was that it naturally had an audience to it. And it's been so interesting to see that audience grow, change, bifurcate, all kinds of interesting things. But what we, the net net of it is, is, is we do find ourselves seeing a lot of um, tech savvy people who understand, um, you know, 
what a SIM card is, that a phone has a SIM card inside of it. I, I, before I started working here, I did not know that. I, I, I tell that story and our CEO oftentimes walks around with a SIM ejector tool messing <laughs> with me because he's like, remember what this is? And I'm like, yeah, of course, of course, of course. But um, yeah, so it's been, it's been a wild ride. And I think, you know, not putting the handcuffs on the brand at the beginning, seeing what would happen, and then that sort of bearing fruit, we just kept pushing against that approach. Sure. So, sure. so Aaron, what were like some of the challenges though when you were trying to get your first customers, right? Oh, that's, this is a very easy question for me to answer because we were selling plans in three, six, and 12 months. We weren't three, six, and 12 months old. So <laughs> the the number one challenge with us was, I mean, if you're familiar with the MVNO space, you get some interesting players in here and some don't last long. So there was a constant uh, pushback from customers on why, why would I buy this for a year when you haven't even been around for a month? So it was very, very challenging. And, you know, you've got to take a little bit of a leap of faith. And our pricing, I think, was just so attractive that some people were willing to, to roll the dice a little bit. But if you look at what we've done since then, we've done lots to prove that, you know, this is a legit brand with a legit service. And we still hear it today, you guys. Like, how can it be any good for 15 bucks a month when <laughs> the reality is it's amazing for 15 bucks a month? Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, you're also working with Ultra Mobile, right? So mm -hmm. how did how did you, you know, make sure that these were two very different and distinct brands uh, for different audiences? Well, when we launched, uh, there, I mean, like you said at the beginning of the the podcast, there there. There weren't, there were some brands who were doing direct to consumer, but nobody was fully committed in my mind and nobody had achieved scale. So with Ultra, you know, Ultra is sold in independent wireless now, independent wireless retail stores. It's also sold in national retail. And that was a very classic approach to the wireless segment. And we had that. So this gave us a totally different distribution channel that we didn't have. So we could start to, you know, you could grow both brands in a healthy way and not have them compete with each other, which is pretty, pretty rare and pretty great for a house of brands like us. Yeah, how is, uh, how is Reddit, um, played in the rule of like development for Mint Mobile? Oh, wow. Well, um, so if you guys, I'm sure you guys have been to our Reddit. I know Stetson, you've oh, been there. 100%. I see you commenting all the time. So yeah, of course. Um, and then, you know, it's me. Like I'm in there. So I go to Reddit every single day, multiple times on the weekend. <laughs> I try to give myself a little bit of a break, but I'm in Reddit every day. I read every com. Well, I used to read every comment. The, the, the sub has just gotten pretty popular and it's getting a little bit more difficult to keep up. But Dennis, your, your, your question is a good one. It's like, what role does it play? We're not passive in that space. That is a custom. So the interesting thing about social media or that I've learned with Reddit is that the person who frequents Reddit and the person who's a contributor to Reddit is, is very different from the sort of like mass media, social media channels. It's about helping. And it's, we've cultivated a space where we invite criticism. Um, we welcome it. You'll see me offer gold to people who get downvoted because they brought up a point that I thought was fair. And, you know, we have some very, very loyal folks out there who want to keep the upvotes going. So I get involved in that way. But more importantly, I'm looking to what the customer's asking for. And when I see them asking again and again and again for the same thing, it's not just me in Reddit. It's also one of our co-founders, Rizwan Kasim or Riz Wank, which might be the worst handle ever. Um, <laughs> but I love Riz and Riz is amazing. He might be in Reddit right now, right? So uh, he's just, between the two of us, we get an excellent pulse on the brand and what we're doing. And we don't just read and delete. We read, we process, and we take those inputs and literally they go into our product planning, our release schedules, our sprints, things like that. We are constantly trying to make the service better. And this is a direct voice. Like we will have these conversations with the customer back and forth. We'll launch betas and give Reddit early access, all kinds of stuff, because that community has been, it has been so special to us. We want to reward it and cultivate it and continue to grow it. So it's not a normal relationship, Dennis. It's one that I would say probably goes a couple layer, layers deeper than most.
So as like a follow up to that though, um, as you guys get larger, you're gonna have different people wanting different needs, right? You're kind of in a balancing act, right? Like, um, for example, mm -hmm. for example, someone like me, I've openly stated I actually don't like annual plans. I don't like paying in bulk. Um, because I like that month to month nature, especially in case my needs end up changing or maybe something changes in my market as far as like coverage is concerned. I like that flexibility, right? Now, obviously, you're probably not getting too many people that are asking for that in your Reddit because Mint is focused on that. But my point more so is, is like, how do you balance that since you said you're trying to target so many different people? Yeah. I, I mean, the interesting thing is what I was talking about segmentation is not that we're trying to just go after, you know, 25 to 34 year old millennials who live in suburbia. Like we don't, you can actually buy media super targeted that way. And we don't do that. But when it comes to the needs of, of the, the, the customer base or the consumer base, you start to see thematics bubble up and you'll see things where one of them that's been a big one for us is we've been asked for a long time about eSIM. So we knew we were developing eSIM because we caught it early on Reddit, much faster than I think every other MVNO in the space. I think we were first. All right, you're both nodding your head. I'm going to claim yeah, I, it. I, I mean, oh. I think so. I mean, <laughs> I was just, re I remember following the Reddit threads like, yes, dear God, please let Mint Mobile deploy eSIM. I really hope that something can do. And, you know, as a consumer, it's hard to tell what a carrier has access to from the providers, right? Like what Mint actually is capable of doing. Um, but I, I was super excited to, to see that hinted on Reddit and then to see the eventual release of eSIM, I think it's been huge. I love it. I moved my number to eSIM on Mint. Uh, and so I think that was that was kind of a fun journey to follow as I saw people clamoring for it and then the eventual release of it and, and the excitement just explode. And and Dennis, back to your point, that's one where that that is a pretty sophisticated piece of technology for the for the average user in embedded sim tech right so for us I, I talk about a lot internally about purpose-built innovation so the purpose of that innovation is is twofold one ease like people who don't understand eSIM might be like oh my god what is this thing it just makes everything so easy you take a picture of a QR code and boom you're on your way you're getting service right like we send you a link it downloads it's, it's just so easy to do but it's purpose-built so when you transact with us on the website, it takes me time to process the order under a day, ship it to you, we ship everything two days. So you're gonna get that in three days. Well, if you have an immediate need, eSIM is an option where you get it in one second. The minute the credit card transaction is complete, you get an order confirmation in email, and then you get your service in an email. Like that's okay. amazing. And can I just say, by the way, I am so proud of you guys. You're doing a better job with eSIM deployment than the big carriers. <laughs> like, no, no joke. Me and Stetson have made fun of AT and T, but if you want to, oh, we do that too. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to get eSIM on e AT and T, they have to mail you out like an actual QR code for you to scan it. Defeats the doing? whole purpose. Defeats I know. Pur I've seen the video. I was laughing when you sent that. I, I like it became a joke internally. Like, there's got somebody's got to create a meme. <laughs> But uh, Stetson, you had a really good question lined up. Go ahead and hit it. Uh, yeah, go ahead and Aaron with yeah, it. Yeah, sure. So Aaron, on uh, another podcast, you said you had an internal motto: fail all the time, fail fast, fail smart, fail forward. What are some things, or, or an example of something that may not have gone as expected, and how did you learn from that to to create a bigger success going forward? Sure. And there's one I missed, and it's fail cheap. Okay, so like that's like, smart. It, oh yeah, it's if an you're gonna fail. One. Make sure it's on the budget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Stetson, I, I would say that, you know, that methodology or that mantra or thought process in house is everything we do. There's many, many things we launch and we don't add scale to right away because we want to make sure they're working properly. What I like to do is I like to have the teams come in and really come with a sharp, sharp idea. And but by sharp, I mean, the edges are sharp. I, I I get really upset as marketers when marketers feel like it's their job to put their fingerprint on it or to round the edges a little bit. That drives me insane. So when it comes to programs that seem like they're really sharp, yeah, we're experts in this space. So we want to make sure the idea is good, the, the communication is clear, but we will put stuff out and just see what happens. I'm trying to think of one where it was a failure, where it's not too embarrassing for me. 
Um, sure, it's a it's a delicate balance. Something that's shareable. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I I tell you, if if I may be so bold, um, we're doing it right now. Okay, so it's happening right this second, right now, and um, it's with eSIM again. So we just launched a free trial program. And that free trial program is in what I would call beta phase right now. We're not putting a lot of marketing support behind it, but it is out there. And if you're, if you're savvy to the wireless scene, there are articles written, uh, there are ways to get access to it, but we want to make sure when we launch it, everything works. It works great. I've used it. I've tested it. It's amazing. So I feel really confident but you've got to play for the edge cases that might arise out there. So we've got it out there right now. I know you're part of the program. Um, so yeah. it's sort of like a, a quiet nod to you for being that insider on the space. And thank you very much. But, you know, I want to make sure it feels really good and we've got everything smooth before we put a big initiative behind it. Cause that free trial feels really special to me. Yeah. You know, it's actually really funny. You brought that up, Aaron. I was, I was just filming a video, like trying to go through the process. I actually struggled so much to sign up because I have used all of my credit cards and all of my emails with mint mobile. So I literally, I was out like the, I'm the edge case. I actually was, you know, I had to make a new email address, find a new credit card I had never used before just because I've signed up and used my mobile service so frequently on so many different occasions. Well, um, I hope that's not an edge case, Stetson. I'm looking for people like you <laughs> yeah. to have five, six, seven accounts with us. No, of course, I'm kidding. But like, it, it's something like that we would never know. Yeah, and what yeah. we'll do is we'll make sure, like I guarantee you right after this, this ends, I will go talk to the product team and say, hey, we've had an edge case, how are we solving for this? Yeah, I'd, well, that's I'd say probably it's... a good thing that it worked out that way. Because if it didn't, then Stetson, hypothetically speaking, could just keep spamming free trials on That's you also true. I think it worked <laughs> as intended. I've just been such a super customer that it's like I'm my own special case. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I, I, I tend to not like to comment on fraud rules because I think it invites, <laughs> uh, like, it invites testing of them. But it sounds to me like things did work properly, actually. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. It, it worked great. It was it was really easy, um, and it was yeah, it was really cool to to test out the service. And I'm excited for that video to go live so I can share my audience, who tends to be more enthusiastic, more tech focused, and really interested in, in trying out new experiences. Um, and I think that's huge. You know, I was just ta chatting with Dennis before the show. Like, I don't think there's too many other carriers offering a free trial of like when I sign up for Verizon, I get hit with a forty dollar activation fee, and you're you're telling me you're like giving service away for free is, is that expensive is that like are you operating at a loss there are you hoping to get customers or, or what has that been like when you operate with a free price everything is at a loss um the reality here though is that i mean we're a young brand still right like i know we've done big things and we've got big moves and, and there's a lot of buzz but the reality is is there's still customers who are reluctant to switch. So those who are reluctant, but willing to give it a shot, I felt like there was an opportunity here to let them take it for a test drive, you know, let them give it a shot. And the cool thing about eSIM, so it's both eSIM and PSIM or physical SIM. Like that, that's, that's a new acronym I saw today. I thought it was beautiful. <laughs> we offer both the E and the P, right? But um, with eSIM, it gives you a chance to really do something special, which is have the service run concurrently or in parallel with your base service. So you don't have to remove a SIM card. If you have a dual SIM phone, you might be able to get around that. But this gives you an, like a two button toggle from your current service provider to mint, which to me, like I said, if you're willing to give us a shot, I'm willing to give you a free trial. Like I'm so confident in the service that I feel really good about giving you that opportunity. So Aaron, I want to hit you with a quick question because I see a lot of people spamming in the comments. Uh oh, um, I can't see the comments. Hopefully it's um, okay. Basically people are asking if you guys have any plans uh, about coming out with like a truly unlimited plan. I know you have an unlimited plan, right. um, which has like the, the cap at 35, I believe, gigabytes. But has there been any talks about maybe doing something like that, like a true unlimited plan, maybe similar to like uh, similar to a visible model where it's just deprioritized data, but you can use as much as you want or anything like that? Yeah, our unlimited plan after, I mean, it's 35 gigs of high speed and then unlimited slower speeds thereafter. But this, this I'll be very transparent. This product was built for... Um, the 
average American unlimited user. I've seen both of your videos on it, so you know exactly where I'm headed. Like the average American does not need an infinity. The average American needs, what is it Stetson in your video? I think you said 2025, you get up to like 90% threshold of America. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like, like 22 gigs. It's I like 20 it. gigs covers, I wanna say 80, two percent or something like that right. and then only four percent use over 50 so i estimate it's like 90 to 95 percent you're going to be fine and you guys and do this thing where you email you you email too like i got an email like hey you only use like two gigs switch so, to a cheaper plan so that's that's what's interesting about mint right so dennis to your core question i, I don't see us doing that in any time and in, in short order and the reason for that is I'm solving for people being put into plans that are not the right fit for them. Like a right. lot of people have been stung by having, by not having an unlimited plan and getting smacked with a huge overage. So with Mint, there are no overages, right? Like it just doesn't yeah. work that way. But what we wanna do is we wanna make sure the consumer knows that we really, really genuinely care about their long-term health on our network and we wanna take care of them. I think Ryan says it better than anybody, is it, is it, is it crazy? Maybe a little. Is it evidence that we don't hate you? Absolutely, right? Like that, that is something we're talking about as a brand because we want people to be long-term customers. And I think that's refreshing in the wireless space to actually trade you down. And you're exactly right. If you got, if you use two gigs on an unlimited plan, you probably don't need unlimited. And how amazing is it that your carrier says, I'd love to be able to present you with this option because we've seen you probably don't need it. And for the Mint customers, Mint customers already know that if you go down to our entry level plan at 15 bucks a month and get four gigs and you need more, you, you can, can always add on. Well, you can buy a bolt on, but oftentimes Dennis, and I'm a very big advocate of this, it's cheaper just to upgrade to the next plan. And what happens is the month you upgrade, let's say you go from four gig to 10 gig, you don't get the delta of six, you get a fresh bucket. So you get a full 10 gigs for the rest of the month or the rest of your billing cycle. Like we're very, very pro customer. And I think that's why people are so excited about the brand. Um, but I do signpost as well. If you do upgrade to the next plan, you have to wait until your next paid cycle to go down again. So a yeah. little bit of math on the customer's um, behalf, but if you find yourself consistently going over, it does make sense. Just for five bucks a month to move up to that next level versus our bolt on price, which is a little bit pricier per gig. No, I, I totally understand. Although as a follow up though, um, one thing that I've noticed is that you can get the bolt on data for all the tiered plans, but for the unlimited plan, you cannot purchase it. Right. We're working that, on that. Did okay, not, so did not see that coming. That, that is, I will take full accountability for that. When we launched the unlimited product, I didn't think we needed that, uh, that feature. I have seen the Reddit comments. That is one. We don't really announce what the innovations we're doing, but that is one that we are working on. Awesome. And then one last small thing. I, I too believe that you guys are for us as consumers. And I also just wanted to say I loved your ad that you did with uh, Satan uh, at the big carriers. <laughs> oh, my God. Because <laughs> um, that is how I actually picture how the big carriers treat us sometimes. How fun was that? Wow. Like, that's sort of a marketer's dream, too, to have a character work with one brand and then actively move to another but stay in the same character. Like, look, I'm sort of marketing nerding out right now, but that was really special for me. I thought that was a brilliant idea. Your commercials have been spot on. They are like the epitome of like your every commercial I see you guys come out with is basically like a Super Bowl quality commercial and it always surprises me. Thank you. Now, I don't think we've released publicly some that are out in the wild, believe it or not. Like um, Mint is a has become a sponsor of the public broadcasting system and you have a unique set of rules when you advertise on PBS. So I'm pretty sure that ad is not out in the wild, but you know, when the PBS sponsorship rolls, you'll start to see even some some funnier, even more entertaining work come out. Okay, that's amazing. I'm excited to see. I don't even have TV, so I hope <laughs> someone archives it on YouTube for me, and I can go ahead and find that. Don't worry, Stetson. Your uh, friendly TV watcher right here got you covered. Thank I'll, you, Dennis. Uh, I'll DVR it. <laughs> All right. Well, this is actually kind of a, an interesting segue, and we had Roger Etner on a couple weeks ago, and he made an interesting statement that. The moment you see an MBO doing television advertising, you know they're losing money. And the, Roger's thinking there is that 
you know, the ad cost is too expensive for the MVNO to make up enough money to end up being profitable. So I'm wondering if, you know, that's been true with Mint or if there are other unseen benefits to running the TV ads that you've experienced. Yeah, we, so we entered into TV May of 2019, 2019, 2018, I'm sorry. Um, and it was very much a legitimacy play. Sorry, I'm seeing a shadow. I'm gonna I'm gonna move a little bit here, guys. Yeah, that's um, good. So um, we moved into TV because TV offered us. Well, I think I made it worse. Uh, the TV offered us legitimacy, right? So it offered us a bigger audience that we hadn't been able to reach. It also proved that, like, it's an interesting thought that most. MVNOs lose money when they go on TV because for us, what it did was it really validated that Mint is a real brand, is here to stay. We are now advertising on television and we didn't just advertise on television. So we started in May of 19. Is that right? No, 18. It's eight. I get the years confused. Gosh, it's embarrassing. Well, but yeah, um, 2020 was like a series of Wednesdays, just, you know, <laughs> on repeat. So, but we launched. We launched TV, I know it's May of 2018, because by February of 19, we were a Super Bowl advertiser. I remember so, that. So, like, I find, you know, perhaps other MVNOs aren't, I don't know if it's the message or the media or the what, but we had success. So much so that we were able to become a Super Bowl advertiser and see continued success after that. Now, I would just leave it at that, that... Sure. We have found television to be a very interesting platform for us and one that's a growth accelerator. Um, digital video to me is a subset of that. And if you've got a great mix of what I would call mass market media vehicles, you can be very efficient with your delivery of message. Thank you. I'm kind of Oh, sorry. Well, I just wanted to thank you for uh, plastering chunky style milk, milk <laughs> across the internet. Uh, that was repulsive and scarring, and I still haven't recovered. Um, I know yeah. there were dairy farmers. That was one of the weirdest things. I did not see the Dairy Farmer Association coming after us as one <laughs> of the, the like potential outcomes of that ad running, and it happened immediately. Wow, wow. All right, Dennis, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say I was kind of surprised um, just because the direct consumer online only market like for what you are versus the typical cable watcher seems like two different totally different hemispheres especially with tv kind of quote unquote dying you know live television well dennis that goes to we don't chase an audience we chase performance True. right so the reality of that is is that the way i buy tv is completely different than any way i've ever bought it in the history of my life and i've come from agencies and a big taco company so i know how to buy mass market media and this is this was an education for me it's just different it's very interesting that i buy tv just like i buy digital where i'm continuously optimizing how i buy where i buy what i buy and what message runs in those spots so are you going to continue? So I'm guessing you're going to continue buying Super Bowl slots. Then it sounds like we bought one, and then if if we actually haven't bought one since, so um, we we bought the Super Bowl ad in 19. Um, we announced in 2020. Uh, Ryan had you know purchased the company, become an owner, and. He he gave us the hard no on Super Bowl for 2020, and we were not a Super Bowl advertiser in 2021. What was amazing was in our conversations, you know, you explain what you're trying to solve for with a big ad buy like that. And the idea germinates to, well, if it's so damn expensive to buy the media, why don't you just give the service away for free? And that conversation happens. We're like, okay, let's give it a swing. Like, like that was one Stetson where it wasn't small. If we had missed on that one, that was going to be a big miss, but thankfully it was incredibly successful to the point where when we did it again this year, we actually made our announcement on groundhog day because, you know, we dropped another newspaper ad, which is classic mint right now. And, uh, uh, instead of doing a promo, we made the service better. We took the money from the media investment and put it into the brand and brought up all the size of the data buckets for everybody, which quite frankly, I think had a better impact uh, for the brand than the spot. But we did get a ton of credit for being Super Bowl advertisers and it was great. It was a super fun experience. Yeah, I mean, 
I, as a customer, I really enjoyed seeing my data increase. I thought that was uh -huh. excellent and I'm fully using it. And uh, actually speaking of ads, Mint is sponsoring this podcast. So why don't we do our ad read? That sounds good. Um, so now for a quick word from our sponsor, Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile is a premium wireless provider without the premium price tag. In fact, Stetson, you use Mint. What's your favorite thing about them? Yes, yeah, so I've actually been a paying Mint Mobile customer for the past two and a half years now. I've been on the $10, or excuse me, the $20 10 gig plan. And what I love most about Mint is they support my favorite features, including Wi-Fi calling, hotspot, 5G access, and as we were just talking about, eSIM, which has been absolutely incredible. If you want to see why Stetson has chose Mint to be his primary provider, now's the perfect time. Mint Mobile is currently doing a free trial of their service where you get 250 minutes, texts, and megabytes of data. So download the Mint Mobile app and give them a try today. Now back to the show. Thank wow, what that. great placement. It's so relevant. <laughs> Talking about Mint with Mint on the show. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's a very strategic ad buy right there, Aaron. Appreciate that. Um, uh, all jokes aside, it's stuff like that that makes a difference, right? Like, like we are very smart with how we place our media dollars, always looking for efficiency, and it helps. And that's, I think that's helped growth a lot. All right. So you had previously mentioned that, you know, your friend Ryan had came, took ownership role in the company. I'm wondering, how did your marketing and advertising strategy change when you knew Ryan was joining the team? Well, the great thing about Ryan is that Ryan brings an, am an amazing amount of exposure for the brand. And you don't want to hide behind that. So it absolutely creates a pivot. If you look at our ads before Ryan, they had a character named the Mint Fox, who's our mascot, as the centerpiece. Going forward, Ryan has been the centerpiece. And I think that's been the biggest creative deviation. Uh, but the work is all still rooted in the same core insights of how can something so good be so affordable? And then having, I mean, the, Ryan's a creative genius. I, I just can't say it any other way. So being able to work with him and his team and his George Dewey's another one who uh, runs Maximum Effort, their agency. We're talking about brilliant creatives and it's just, it's a pleasure for me. So sometimes as a marketer, you got to know when to get out of the way. And this is something I preach all the time. I mean, if I can give you guys um, uh, an example, when we launched our uh, Rick Moranis spot, that was one where we, that was a new campaign for us. And I was very excited about this campaign. And the, the team wanted to come back and, and bring in a celebrity. When they pitched Rick, I'll be honest, I was like, huh, interesting. You know, I haven't seen much of Rick in 20, 25 years. Love the guy, Ghostbusters, Little Shop of Horrors, like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Like there's so many cult classics. I'm like, dang, but really? And then that's where like you have to, as a marketer, know when to just step back and let creatives be creative. I mean, I said, if you guys think it's going to work, I'm in. And, you know, Ryan's a huge Rick fan. The spot was just Ryan basking in, in, in Rick, which was so fun. And it went crazy. But like a marketer, I could see, right? I can see some of my colleagues saying, hmm, should we get someone younger or maybe someone who's bigger on Instagram or something like that? And that just didn't feel as genuine to me. So I said, look, if you guys are in, I'm in. And I mean, it sounds silly to say the decision was to step back and let the creatives make the call. But I think that's what helps and makes the work more, more sharp is that you don't have somebody on there trying to like dull it and make it more, you know, centrist. I, I like things that are provocative. Yeah, no, I, I almost wondered after watching that if that ad was more for Ryan or if it was actually an ad for Mint. Well, I, it, it worked for both. So <laughs> it was an amazing, amazing day. I will definitely say it helped out Ryan because I'm gonna I'm gonna surprise everybody here. I didn't actually know Ryan Reynolds was like famous because of Deadpool. I don't watch superhero movies. Oh. It it was actually Ryan Reynolds appearing for the Mint Mobile ads that made me watch his Deadpool movies. That's oh how gosh. I figured it out. That's how I made the connection. <laughs> I'm so sending him a clip of that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it. I oh, by the way, I did subscribe to his channel. I watch all the commercials. You're like one of the uh, 
You're one of the few people where I openly go out to watch commercials. Typically, I pay to avoid them, but for you guys, I love them. So. Isn't it bizarre? Because, like, so, you know, I'm on YouTube a lot, obviously, and I look at the performance of our videos. I think we're at, like, our last three videos have eclipsed 11 million views in total now. And the thing that shocks me the most is when you read the comments and people are going, sees Ryan Reynolds ad immediately f watches to the end, you know, like how come this is the only advertising I want to see? Can we make shows about your advertising? It, it's because it's good. It's fun. It's entertaining, you know? And I think there's also a, there's a truth to everything we do. And I think that's what makes it entertaining because we can all relate. I mean, we did a Bitcoin video, which, oh my gosh, after Coinbase yesterday, is this crazy world where like, that person in that video is literally out. I think it's a quarter of a billion dollars, like some crazy, crazy, crazy amount. And it's just, it's a true story. It's fun. It's light. And that's the kind of stuff we want to do. I'm still waiting for a really good Christmas story commercial from you guys or something <laughs> like that. Well, did you know what we did last year? Oh, you're not a customer. Oh, you missed it. You talking about the phone call? You talking about the phone call? No, Stetson, did you uh, get anything in the mail from us? Well, I actually moved, so it was bad timing. Oh. But I know you sent Christmas cards to everyone. We and, did. And uh, yeah, that was. I really wanted to get one. I, I like was trying to text my parents, like see if they got it, and they could forward it to me. But oh, that's too funny. Well, I have some extra at the office. I'll, I'll make you. sure we get one to you. But yeah, we're Dennis. We're doing stuff different all the time. Like that to me was an opportunity last year to just like, ooh, like <laughs> the year's over let's let's have a little bit of lightness but at the same time show some appreciation and tell our tell our customers like we do appreciate them and that's what that was so um i would not be surprised if there isn't more holiday work coming and it would be very minty when we do it that yeah i excellent. mean it, it, it it plays well. I mean, you guys are named mint and, you know, mint candy canes and mint this and that. I'm just like picturing like a little animated cartoon with a little fox. And he has like his little Christmas story. He's getting all hollowed up, whatever fox is doing in the winter. Either that or Ryan dresses up as Deadpool and it's like some epic action packed, like he's grabbing <laughs> cookies and stuff. <laughs> it's super fun. I, I, I mean, you know, Christmas so far away. It, uh, what's cool about our advertising, too, and we don't have to always talk about ads, you guys, but is we make them crazy quick. So um, I, I will give you a story, which is sort of silly, but uh, during the election, you know, some notes came out that like our competitors were big donors and mint doesn't do any donations. So we had a fun idea to go become a political donor. So we found the mayor of Idlewild, California, who happens to be a dog named Max. And I live in Southern California. So had an oversized check printed and jumped in the car. And I went from check delivery guy, I got upgraded to guy who hands check over to dog and ended up making, you know, the video edit, which is super fun. And I think Gosh, all in that was done in just a few days. Like that's it from you know, idea to execution to out in the public. You know, I just had a quick thought. Since you guys put all the ads up on YouTube, do you ever do you ever end up making like a profit off of your ads just from the ad itself? <laughs> no, we don't run pre-roll to the ad, which I hope our CFO doesn't hear that. Ugh. Like you, I was gonna say because that would be actually pretty clever. Like literally, the ads could pay for itself, and you could start like an actual mini series with the fox or something, like a cool little cartoon or something. I, I am. I tell you what, I feel really content with the fact that people just want to watch the ads, right? Like I will continue and promise to make them as entertaining as possible as long as people to continue to enjoy them and seek them out. Yeah, it's it's crazy. I mean, Ryan, his channel on YouTube has two point six one million subscribers, and they're just watching ads like that's the channel and they're great and i love that oh i don't know some of his stuff it may have a commercial aspect to it but it's so funny <laughs> did did so when ryan came on did it end up changing like the work environment like the culture at mint um so so remember we announced in it was november 25th um uh it was november 25th when we announced and then you had the month of december the month of january February, and then COVID hit. So like the world changed. So the workplace changed, everything changed all at once. I mean, for me, the dynamics have obviously changed because we work with him daily, 
Like he's very involved in the business. And I think that's one of the things that makes it so exciting is how he's genuinely involved and look, he's not in there looking at, you know, sprints and what releases we have, but he's in the big strategic, big moves we want to make as a brand. And yeah, we now have a really invested owner who has a huge platform and that's very exciting. So it changes the dynamic. If anything, it's made us sharper because we know we're reaching more people with everything we do and we want to make sure we're constantly over delivering to the customer. That is way cool. Aaron, you had mentioned, you know, just a few moments ago, like really uh, taking care of the customers and being mindful of the customers and something I noticed that you did during the 2020 pandemic is on March 15th, you made the decision to, to give all Mint Mobile customers free unlimited data add-ons uh, for a period of 90 days. Now, mm -hmm. I thought initially this was like a T-Mobile move and I, I'm allowed to say, I think that Mint uses T-Mobile for coverage. And so I thought, all right, T-Mobile is just making it so everyone on their network gets unlimited data. That's the right thing to do. And I learned later that that, that wasn't actually the case. It was an independent decision from Mint. And you shared on a podcast with Gary Vee that this actually came from the marketing budget. So yeah. what was that decision like? And you know, why did you decide to go through with that uh, move? I remember this like it was yesterday. So, I mean, it was a Friday the 13th, March 13th is when the stay at home order came out in California. Now our company had sort of sensed, you know, like things were happening, something wasn't right. So we had already started allowing people to work from home voluntarily. Uh, we had done that, but when I got sent home, just like everybody in the state of California, like I got home and I was like, oh my gosh, this is scary. Like I'm genuinely like the, the uncertainty and the fear factor was high in my mind. And I wanted to make sure my family knew I was safe, just like everybody does, right? We're people. And then I was like, oh my God, we've got all these customers who are scared and they don't, you know, like they don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. The last thing I want them to worry about is their ability to communicate right? Like this is a disruption. We, this is not good. So I got home and I called our CEO um, and we started talking. And by the end of the night, we had the loose construct for a program, engineering, customer care, uh, project, man like the entire organization basically created a tiger team on a Friday night. And by, we worked Saturday, we worked Sunday, Monday morning, we announced that we were doing the free data, data add-on. And you know, it's interesting, I'll be very transparent. It was not the smoothest UX on day one because what we did was speed was what we were solving for, okay? And I think this is one of the nice things about a, a, a group like us is that we're small and nimble. And you know, when we have your best interest, we said, if you buy the data add-on, it's gonna like, to get it out quickly, buy the data add-on, and then within 24 hours, we'll credit your credit card back. We were able, and the plan was to do that for 30 days, and we did it. A, a week or two in, we realized this is going to last longer, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna extend the period another 30 days, but let's fix the UX, and, and we did that, right? So we ended up making this process better and cleaner, but it was just most important to get that done and speed was what we did. And it was phenomenal. It was a huge shift in us. So, you know, obviously we weren't acquiring customers. People aren't really in the mood to switch cell phone providers when you're like, go home and figure out what's going to happen tomorrow. So we felt like it was a really good opportunity to make sure our customer base knew we were looking out for them and doing them a solid. So we did that. And then we did it for Texas too. So we actually had a, a person on Twitter ping Ryan saying, you know, we're freezing here in Texas and like, we don't want to run out of day. Like there's, there's fear here. So we immediately did the same, but with Texas, what had happened was, you know, I'll take the culpability for this. We were late to the game that like the freeze had happened. And there were some subscribers when we looked at the behaviors who had bought a bunch of bolt-ons and were paying for it. And I didn't think that was right either. So the program we came up with there was that, you know, if you have a Texas area code or a zip code on your account from today forward is free. And by the way, we're also going to go backwards to, I think it was February 14th and give you free. If you had previously purchased that, we'll credit you the money back. And I think, you know, 
I hope I'm not sounding like a salesman because I'm really just trying to explain our philosophy here. And that is to do right by the subscriber. And I think that is something that, you know, is a win for everybody. That's that's weird, dude. Have you spoken with the big guys that you're doing it wrong? No, that's no, I mean, that's amazing to hear. I mean, Aaron, I'll just say as someone that actually does sales work, uh, I always try to explain to people that I end up training like people picture sales people like Wolf of Wall Street. But the truth of the matter is, is that if you're just honest, straightforward and do what you would want to have, like as far as treatment, like as like a yeah. person, the product will sell itself, right? Like you're selling cell phone service. Everybody needs cell phone service mm -hmm. and they're going to pick you because you do right by the customer in the same way that everybody needs or not everybody needs, but everybody wants some form of entertainment, right? Like mm -hmm. if AT&T were to come out and start being like really gung ho about their HBO product and really straightforward about like what they're offering, people would pick them, right? Or same thing with like live TV, like live TV wouldn't be dying right now if they would just stop hiding all the fees and just say like, here it is. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. I, it's, it's hard for me to talk positively about my competitors in that line. So I'm just going to choose to be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> that, sure thing, that's sure fine. Thing. Um, I do want to ask though, man, what, like, what is your most proudest moment? Like as far as like marketing is concerning your mint mobile career, like what's the, what's this like, you know what, this is what, this is what defines me. This was my proudest day. You've, you've had a lot too, where you, you've bought in, I think it was a newspaper ads or something. I don't even get the newspaper, so I, forgive me for not knowing, but I know you did a print ad and it was like, here's an ad for Mint. And then someone on Twitter was like, hey, can you put my dog in it? And like the next day, someone's dog was in the print ad and you've done like the free data buckets. You did the, the commercials with the chunky style milk, the carpet showers and the finger dipping. I feel like Mint has had a lot of really creative ad moments. So yeah, do you, do you have one that stands out? Gosh, you guys, like, so Mint is a brand that is marketing driven, right? It's the marketing that we hope gets you to come give us a look. If I was going to be completely honest, I think building Mint is the most proud thing I've been able to do. And it's not just me. There's a massive team behind this. And to be able to like be at the inception point and have it grow and be so successful and be able to do more stuff, right? Like you have to have... Uh, a brand that's growing and healthy and is doing good work in order to keep doing it. And that's probably the thing I'm most proud of because this is a sector or space or a delivery mechanism to the consumer that didn't exist before. Why is beyond me. And I feel very fortunate to be able to, to, to do it first at scale, but gosh, like that's the thing I'm most proud of. And like, you know it too, because I'm hiring people from my past right? Like I'm going back and finding the smartest marketers I've had the pleasure of working with and trying to get them to come work with us here at Mint because I'm so proud of what we've done, what we have been able to do, I should say, and all the things we want to do in the future. So the team is a huge component and this is going to sound crazy, but we're kind of like a big family in the marketing department. I mean, the organization is even bigger family to the point where, you know, we're just talking to each other and making sure each other's okay and things like that throughout the last year. And that, that like, this has been the most amazing place I've ever worked. Like it's been really phenomenal. Like the, the company's great. The people are great. We're hiring people who have like partnership and, and camaraderie and like, we're all rowing in the same direction. So it's incredible. And that's the thing I'm most proud of because I'd like to say I've had, you know, a decent part in helping to build what we've got here. And it's just so special. It's, it's just, it's the most proud thing. I, I mean, I talk about it all the time. Well, that is awesome. That, that's, that's sweet. And, you know, I want to give a quick shout out to the developers who are working really hard on the app. Like I noticed the app got a huge redesign, went from looking pretty medium to looking just awesome. It looks super clean. Websites gotten huge improvements over the years. Mint Mobile Alex went from one person on Reddit to like a team. It's yeah. been really cool. And like, I know even if these people are watching, like they're doing so much. And I know that I, it can feel like Ryan is the face of the brand and sort of making the announcements, but it, there's a there's a team of hardworking people in many different facets in the company. And I think that's awesome. And I've loved seeing the improvements that you guys drive to the product. Yeah. So. And it's super cool. Thank you for giving them a shout out. Um, I, I couldn't do the list of names. I get pulled off like at the Academy, right? Like for thanking everybody. But I mean, 
you're, you're right. Like I get the pleasure of, of hearing the praise for all their incredibly hard work. And I'm so proud of this team. Like, it's awesome. Like, it's so cool. So Aaron, as someone that's watched the show, I'm sure you know what's coming next. We got to know what phone plan do you personally use? Yep. So I'm on the 15 gig. Okay. okay. Um, wow. The reason I'm on 15 gig is um, I like to do some crazy stuff every once in a while. Um, I run the business off the phone. So I will disconnect from my Wi-Fi at home. I'll turn on hotspot and I'll run the business for a week from my cell phone just to really pressure test the service. I'm always putting it through the ringer. And to me, that plan gives me the biggest field to have tons of data, tons of hotspot and really get the benefit. I'm not a big data user because, well, especially now that I'm home <laughs> all the time, like I think when I do use Wi-Fi, I'm under a gig and a half a month because uh, there's just no transit for me. So I'm not listening to music or things like that. But my normal cycle in a pre-pandemic world was something like six or eight gigs a month. So right at the national average. Um, but yeah, you know, there's no need for me to be on unlimited. So I don't, I don't even, I didn't switch my plan. Sure. And what sure. phone do you personally use? Oh, now, you know, I have like an arsenal of devices, right? Like, you I, do? I, I don't know. Oh I yeah. Mean, oh. <laughs> I mean, there's a, uh, Three more phones chilling in my bedroom, but yes. My wife will kill me if I walk in the house and the house is a disaster, but I've got a drawer with like seven phones in it. Um, but my primary, my my everyday driver is uh, an S20 5G. So hey. I, I know I'm on the Android side of the house. Now that said, I've got an SE, right? Like I, now I'm a diehard Mac user, okay? I've been on Mac OS since before it was Mac 10, I think it was OS eight or nine. So this is super, super, super old plastic laptops, you know, clamshells, big fan of the Mac computer. Uh, and I've got an iPhone SE because the operating system, I want to make sure Mint's running slick on it all the time. And it's a great device, but uh, yeah, the S20 is the daily driver. So Sweet. this is perfect because this leads into a question that's been uh, itching at the back of my brain. So, T-Mobile and the other carriers have been sending out announcements that they're going to be shutting down their legacy networks, 2G and 3G and so forth, right? In fact, uh, all over the news, we've been hearing about DISH, you know, going to court over it. I was just wondering if these changes that have been happening on the uh, bigger level are having any impact for Mint. And if you guys have behind the scenes been making plans to help upgrade people's legacy devices that might need, might need to be replaced. It's a great question. And um, let me answer it this way. There is not a single wireless provider today who doesn't have some form of bell curve distribution of devices on their network from state of the art to <laughs> dinosaur. I know this because I can see the output reports, right? We have, an, we have the first, we have the OG iPhone on our network. No, stop. No way. One. Stop. Oh one, my God. One. I've been like, who is that person? I don't know, but they have signed up to receive uh, messages from us. So we've tried to reach this person because <laughs> I got to know, like, why are you still on the OG iPhone? Like, I want to know. Please make an advertisement for them where you just <laughs> literally like record and give them a new iPhone as like a present or something. Um, but, but my point is, is like, this is, this is the world we live in. You guys, you know, this, everybody's excited about 5g. You can't have G, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G. So you can have 11 Gs floating around in space. That's too many Gs. You have to turn down the old to turn on the new. And if you're a wireless service provider not willing to upgrade your customer base, you have to be willing to let them go. And it's insane to me to see this argument and like see it playing out publicly and going, well, wait, everybody sort of knows this and you have to do something. As far as Mint and what we're doing, Devices are interesting. We don't we don't act like we do sell devices today, but I would say it's devices as a, as a secondary option. Um, like we're primarily selling service to people who are BYOD, unlocked, et cetera, et cetera. Hmm, that might change soon. Can you maybe oh. give us a little hint? Nope. 
Wow. I don't even know what you're talking about. Wow. Darn. What if it was a hypothetical? <laughs> Hypothetically, if something was going to happen for some random carrier, what would they do? I don't know. That they, I tell you what they wouldn't do. Exactly what everybody else is doing. That's for <laughs> sure. Wow. That is that is really exciting to hear, Aaron. Uh, my eyes will be glued to the Mint Mobile website and staying up to date with all the latest news that is coming out there. Maybe Reddit has hints. People clamoring for something that have been touched. It's on. too soon. It's too soon. I oh promise. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm excited. Um, yeah, I think we covered a lot, and you answered all of our questions. We really appreciated having you on. And, you know, as we mentioned, the show is brought to you by Mint Mobile. We want to thank them for, for sponsoring. Super meta. <laughs> Super meta. Very targeted. Uh, well played. So you can actually sign up. There's a link in the video description. You can get their free app. Try their free service with their free trial. Do it on eSIM. You can use it as just data. Use your personal number for calls and texts, which is genius, by the way. Like, that's that's brilliant. I still can't believe like few carriers are offering free trials. There's like I just want to try Verizon out. Nope, forty dollar activation fee. Um, but yeah, want to thank thank. Well, Mint hey, that's for... that's almost three months of service on us. <laughs> I know. I think about that every time I sign up, Aaron. Every time it kills me. It pains me. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. Thank you to Mint for sponsoring the video. Uh, links in the description. Aaron, hey, thank, thank you guys too. Seriously, I, I mean, thank you guys for doing this. You guys are special and doing something really interesting and great here. And I love it. I continue to watch and always visit the website. And I, I want to say thank you back to you because I think giving us a platform and giving all the brands a platform to talk about what's important and wireless is really cool. And look, I think we take it for granted, but this is one of the most essential technologies we have. So thanks for the platform. And I, I love it. I, I really appreciate it. Yeah. yeah, and thank you as well. Just to be clear, it was awesome getting to talk to you. Uh, I told Stetson behind the scenes one day as we grow, I definitely hope to be able to get Ryan on. So <laughs> if you can uh, slide that on to him, and if you can make a little bit of time, it'd be so appreciated. But um, otherwise, yeah, thanks again. As Stetson said, guys, seriously, try out Mint Mobile. Um, they're awesome. We have constantly recommended them on this show for their awesome customer experience. And as mentioned earlier, they have a free trial. You have no reason not to try them. Download the app. Yeah. And we don't hate you, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. All right. Well, thank you so much. That's it for the show. Take care, everyone. Enjoy your evening. Peace.